A Hong Kong-based shipping company suspended its activity to and from Israel. That's after vessels in the Red Sea came under attack from Houthi fighters in Yemen. The Houthis say they're going to continue their attacks if Israel doesn't stop its war on Gaza. Their activities are starting to have far-reaching consequences, not just for Israel, but globally. Salah Khaira reports from the Israeli port city of Haifa. Sirens sound across the city of Ashdod as the Iron Dome successfully intercepts Hamas missiles weeks after the war on Gaza started. Ashdod is one of Israel's main ports and also the one closest to the Strip. It's vulnerable to attacks and has been forced to divert some of its shipments. The bulk of them have been sent to Haifa, one of the safest port cities in Israel so far. 30 million tons of cargo, including oil, raw materials and grain, already pass through it annually. But this has come at a cost. Backlogs and rerouting of cargo have created big delays and raised insurance premiums. Israel is being attacked on multiple fronts, not just from the Gaza Strip by Hamas, but also from further along the coast on the border with Lebanon by the Iranian-backed group Hezbollah. But even more concerning, by the Houthi rebels firing long-range missiles and drones towards the port city of Ilat. The Iranian-backed group controls much of northern Yemen. For weeks, they've targeted ships in the Red Sea they believe have links with Israel or are headed to Israeli ports. And because the Red Sea is one of the world's most important shipping routes, the effect has been huge. It's caused an 80% drop in shipping activity at Ilat. Insurance prices on cargo heading to Israel have risen by 300%. And with around 12% of global trade passing through the Red Sea, it has regional and global implications. Experts say costs of shipping goods are already rising, and several major shipping companies have pulled their ships from the Red Sea altogether, raising costs and lengthening delivery times. It's no longer uh, a threat against Israel. It's, again, it's an international problem because they are hitting um, boats and ships which have nothing to do with Israel. And there is another point. The Israeli Navy is too small to deal alone with the threat. The U.S. says it's working with maritime forces to bolster security in the region, a reminder that Israel's war on Gaza is making its impact felt far beyond the Middle East. Sarah Khairat, Al Jazeera, Haifa. Victoria Mitchell is a maritime analyst from Control Risks. It's a global specialist risk consultancy. She's joining us live from Amsterdam. Thanks very much indeed for being with us. Um, just give us an indication of how important this route is for shipping. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you for uh, the invitation. And the Red Sea, it is a critical maritime route together with the BAB, as you've mentioned in your piece there, 12% uh, of global trade passes through the Red Sea, and that is across vessel types. So we're talking about containerized uh, cargo, general cargo, grain, uh, oil, oil products, what you've, what, what comes into the shops, what goes into the tank, all of that will pass through the Red Sea. I know that in, in specific regions such as this one around the world, that piracy has always been, been an issue. And I know that some uh, ships usually carry some sort of protection. On, a, on normal circumstances, what kind of protection would ships be having? That will vary uh, depending on the vessel type and the decision of any operator who will be transiting these waters. But uh, vessels may elect to adopt hardening measures consistent with advisory advisories for the waters. Uh, some vessels may embark armed security teams, uh, but certainly it isn't a one-size-fits-all plan for the waters or the region. Mm. What's going to be the impact of, on trade and costs if ships are unable to use this route? So currently, we are not seeing a complete shutdown by any means of the Red Sea route. The implications currently are very much the at the kind of individual operator level. 
What is important to highlight is the concern for the seafarers themselves who are actually transporting the goods who are who are sailing the vessels along this route. And that has been a concern highlighted by several of the operators who have elected to pause their shipments uh, in the current circumstances. So we've seen statements from various liners who've said that they would like they, they plan to pause uh, and take stock of the situation in the coming days. But what we're also seeing is one of the major concerns is around insurance premiums. So this is something which will push costs up and these will be passed along the chain. As you mentioned in uh, your piece earlier, the costs have gone up uh, almost 300% in some cases, but across the board, war risk premiums will increase costs for operators. And we'll also see increased costs and also delays where vessels reroute. So rather than taking the Red Sea Suez Canal transit route, you can instead, the alternative is to sail around the coast of Africa. Uh, and that would be the alternative for a lot uh, for any Asia Europe trade. That will add days uh, days to any transit. It will require additional port calls and it will require additional fuel and additional costs. And all of these will add into the cost of any shipments and trades. Now, we know that the US uh, Defense Secretary is in the process of trying to uh, hold discussions about an expanded naval force for protection uh, mm -hmm. of shipping. What difference is that likely to make to, to shippers that are go using this route? So currently the details regarding the uh, possible broadening of the naval presence in the region are unclear and so we wouldn't be able to state exactly what the difference will be by any expansion or broadening of naval assets in the region but what we can say is that the naval forces have demonstrated a capacity to assist to render assistance and to help vessels who are using this route and that will be continued that will continue and any broadening of the number of assets in the region the number of monitoring surveillance for example would all assist vessels continuing to use the Suez Red Sea route. Victoria Mitchell from Control Risks we appreciate it thank you very much indeed. Thank you.